Hello from Bryson City, here with another free art lesson. Um, today we're going to be doing crow quill pen and ink drawing. So I know some of you are like, what is that? So, um, real quickly, you guys may have seen these pen sets where they do calligraphy. And um, <clears throat> it's um, um, basically it's an old way of drawing, writing. Um, I've got a couple of these here with me, and I will show you. Let me get everything straightened up here. Um, but uh, if you ever watched on some of these older movies, older older Disney movies, uh, well, the best example is uh, Christmas Carol. Um, if you'll notice, um, Bob Cratchit has his quill, and he dips it in the ink well before he writes. Essentially, that's what it is, a crow quill pen. Um, so I've got my paper here. I've got some pens here. I'm going to demonstrate a little bit of drawing. Um, I'm going to be making something up as far as my drawing topic. So um, I'm going to be making um, um, probably I'll just draw like a like maybe a cabin in the woods kind of a thing. That's what I was thinking. Um, these really lend themselves uh, to a more methodical and um, calm way of drawing. Uh, you have to kind of be patient with them. Uh, a quill, the way it's designed, and I'll go ahead and turn around here so I can show you. So, now these are all holders, and of course in the end is is the quill. If I can get it to show up, there it is. So there's the quill. That's the ink. So we'll just dip that down in there and we'll draw with it. But I have I have a couple different kinds. So here's this more square kind with a little bit of a well on it. This is from a calligraphy set. And this is a double-ended holder, so this is pretty cool. So you can have two. So I have a broad one here and a more narrow one here at this end. I also have some little ones here with some little bitty points on them. So here's these two. Um, I've had people ask me before, can you use these for tattooing? I would think not. I would think that it probably wouldn't work like that. So don't go poking stuff with them. <laughs> these are, um, they're usually, uh, I guess in the, um, before they were made out of tin. So now they're just made out of light, um, light metal. So you don't want to try and, you don't want to try and stick these into, you know, something or try and gouge into the paper because, um, you will break them off and then um, if you have extra if you have extra um, tips um, I store mine and this shows you how long I've had these can anybody guess what this is if you're over 30 I know you know what this is this is a film canister so I've had these long enough that um, you know I store my extras in here so, but yeah, I've had these long enough that I've had, I got a film canister. <laughs> what is that? That's like, that's like so 1990s, right? <laughs> so anyway, and then I also have a selection of inks back here. Um, the two most popular brands of inks, I'm, I'm, there may be others that I'm not aware of, but my two favorites, um, Higgins, um, you can get that anywhere. So here's like the permanent black ink. Um, you can get that. And also Windsor Newton, um, they make, um, colored inks. So here's their black India ink. Um, and then of course all the different colors that they have a variety of, uh, you can buy a set of these still these, um, and Higgins also makes colors too. So the difference between Windsor Newton and Higgins ink is the Higgins ink is not water soluble. So when you draw with it, that's it. It's done. Um, you can rinse it off to clean up, but when it dries, it's done. The Windsor Newton ink is water soluble. So if you want to get a Sumi brush or another brush and then do some, um, you know, like watercolor effects, ink wash effects, the Windsor Newton ink is, is better for that. So for our drawing today, I've laid all these out, but, um, I'm probably just going to be using this, um, Colors are great, too, to do washes and stuff, but um, they become difficult when you try and draw just lines with the colors. So, um, But you can try them. You can try them if you like. It's uh, totally up to you. 
So, um, there's a lot of different places you can buy these inks. I know um, any of the uh, big box craft stores sell them, as well as um, um, if it was uh, if they were open. The WCU Bookstore locally is probably the best place to get um, to get a selection of inks. So, um, and that, of course, that's in Colorway. But um, I'm sure right now they're closed. So online would be your best option if you want to get some of these. You can start off also with a calligraphy set. Instead of buying the Croquil pen uh, separately, you can buy the calligraphy set. It gives you a couple different uh, tips with it. You, they usually give you some ink with that too. So, so that's a good way to get started. But, so anyway, I'm going to stick my camera in here and we'll get going. Let me slide my, my stuff over here. Oh, and I forgot to mention today that I'm having coffee with um, uh, J.B. Phillips from Charleston. I uh, met him a few years ago. So this is a, a slip painted. We were talking about brushwork. This is slip that's been painted on. Raw clay, glaze on the inside. So, but good cup of coffee, and it looks uh, very traditional. So, all right. So here we go. Ooh. A little dried up ink there on my paper. Let's get that off of here. All right, and this one, of course. These two are probably two of my favorites. They're about this, you know, similar in size. So um, we'll go with the old standby, and then I'm going to sit this one over here too, just in case. So when you draw with a with a quill, um, you kind of need to make sure that you're going in one direction. So so we'll start off this way. And get it going here. <laughs> That's one way to start. As Bob Ross would say, there's there's no mistakes, just happy accidents. So there we go. But, uh, our first ink drawing is that of a spider. We'll start off with a tree here. So I'm just making some marks. Trying to fill in with this texture of this tree. start with the porch of our cabin. Just 
make some quick short lines kind of fill in the uh, texture of those uh, old wood shingles We'll go with a little smaller point now and uh, rough in our, our chimney. So this would have been rough rocks, so I'm just going to make some squiggles and stuff to fill it in like rocks. There we go. Like I said, we're doing cabin in the woods. So here's our tree in the foreground. We'll put in our, our cabin here. When you think of cabin in the woods, I like to think of uh, there's a couple really nice places. Of course, the Acone Lefty Visitor Center is a great cabin in the woods. A little farmstead there with the uh, barn and the cabin, corn crib. Another great cabin. Uh, took many classes there. Some of you guys might have another memory or idea of a cabin that you think of. Still a lot of great standing cabins over in Cades Cove. I'm going to put a, a window on this side. Start filling in some of these these logs around it for boards. It could be uh, board siding. Up in the higher second floor, it would be board siding. Lower lower section here would be a be like the log cabin. Have a door here. See, it's one of those old school screen doors. So we'll fill in the frame like that and then we'll do some really thin lines one direction. Um, my suggestion is whenever you do cross hatching with these, is to make sure you um, <coughs> uh, let it dry and then come back and do the second round. Because sometimes when it's still wet, it'll just fill in and be black. They'll kind of run together. So, go ahead and put our boards here for the for the porch. Just like that. You gotta remember log cabin too. Modern homes have a lot of windows. Log cabins really didn't have that window that much. Part of it was to um, for insulation. The other part of it was that um, windows were expensive. <laughs> windows were a luxury item. stack stones here a couple large stones piled up here as steps okay. I'll go ahead and put a smaller tree back here behind our cabin to kind of juxtapose off of this bigger tree in the in the foreground up here and our spider
put some pins in here to note the ground, kind of fade them out as we go back this way a little bit. Go ahead and draw some leaves on this tree. Fill it in a little bit. Fill in some on this big one up front. I think so. There we go. You have to kind of slow down with this kind of drawing because as you work on it, you got to give the ink time to dry. You know, when you draw with a pencil or a permanent marker. You know the, the ink is pretty much dry. You know you're you're done unless you add water, you know to uh, like to the permanent marker. You can clean it out with other things. Uh, water on the like you know if you have watercolor pencils, uh, they even have watercolor markers now, which are pretty cool. My wife has a set, and uh, you can do some really really cool stuff with those. But this is a it's a different it's a different technique. You kind of like I said you have to take your time sort of work through it and you got to think about as you go I like to work out from the middle uh, if you're moving all around the drawing with this then what tends to happen is um, you get your hand in part that's wet and you smear it and it's no good also you want to make sure that you're using um, thick enough paper um, I will be honest and say that I know I'm not using thick enough and um, uh, you know this is what I got and that's okay but you want to use some thicker paper that's designed for pen and ink or mixed media. So, so over here, let's see, let's make our way onto this part of the page and let's draw over here. Let's draw the beginnings of what will become our barn. And as a matter of fact, since I was talking about the Econ Lefty, Village uh, or the Econ Lefty Visitor Center, sorry. Um, I'm going to kind of copy the barn that they have there, which is this big, uh, not the not the stereotypical barn with the uh, the gambled roof, but this um, it's just a big roof and then it, it's open down here on the on the sides. The way that barn is set up is there are pins and lots in the center part of the barn and then the rest of the outside is open so it's covered for animals or they could back a wagon in here so all right now i'm going to actually turn my paper to make this a little a little easier for myself so this would have been covered with boards boards that were probably uh especially that that uh, the, the Cone Lefty farm said those boards were probably milled and cut at the sawmill at Ravensford. And of course, where that sawmill was, the side of it and everything is is now the, um, the Cone Lefty Job Corps. So the bottom part of this is stacked logs and there's no mud or anything between the logs so the air can get through for the animals and stuff. And we'll put the couple of on the end that support this. And then I had this one random line here that wasn't supposed to be here so I'm going to use that to turn it into a fence. So it'll read as a fence on that. And then um, I'm going to fill in this loft area. I'm just going to make it dark. So the first part of that is just putting in that group of lines and in this area. Lots of little lines with the crow quill. 
depending on how much pressure you put on your pen determines how much ink comes out. So if you really push down hard, you'll get a lot of ink. You push down very lightly, you can make some very fine lines. Um, the only other, I think, the only other art form that you can kind of get this, this kind of line work is uh, etching and dry point on the printing press. So, and then we'll link all this together with some, you know, with the ground here. Maybe uh, some kind of clump of something growing here and something growing here off the porch. Maybe some stones. Maybe they would have had some stones in a circle on the way out to the to the barn like that. So that's my line. More of those stones will make the path. So they widen out back here as it gets to the barn. And if you wondered, I, I, I'm, I'm holding mine upside down just because um, I'm left-handed. I know in the video um, it's mirrored and everything, but I'm left-handed. So uh, most of these crow quills, when you look at the uh, the bigger ones, the angle that's on the edge is angled for the direction of a right-handed person. So since I'm left-handed, I kind of have to hold them upside down to, to get them to work. Fill that in nicely. I'm going to put back here a bit of a tree line, like what you'd see at, at the Econ Lefty. There's the bottom of the tree line, and then this is nice. So there's the far edge of the forest. So we'll just come through and pull up from that and just show some trees in there, maybe a couple that come up out. and fill those in too. We'll connect those in. There we go. Just like that. Get our cabin in the woods going here. Now, let's get back to this area over here. Oh, I almost forgot. Let me finish the side first. <laughs> let's go through here and let's go. cloud in the sky here. I'll flip this over and see if I can get it to work both ways. Taking up the leaves on this tree. There we go. Work on this part so so a lot of this is building up the lines to give it an appearance that you want it to have. So we'll have this come through and Maybe this is a root right here. It disappears. We'll put us a large stone here. do with our spider? Hmm, let me ponder on that some. A couple little 
cobblestones. Some grass poking up here behind the stone. Some out to the side here. <laughs> Amy Russ says that Brent said I sound like Bob Ross so I, I might maybe might be some uh, emulation there <laughs> I've told people this story before but when I was in um, elementary school I would fake being sick so that I could stay home and Number one, have ramen noodles for lunch. That's back when ramen noodles were good. Um, the packs of ramen noodles. If you get real ramen noodles, yes, they're very good. But now I'm talking about the packs, you know, the uh, 18 cent pack of ramen noodles. <laughs> but I'd stay home so I could have ramen noodles. And then the other thing I would do was watch on PBS after lunch. Because I could see Justin Wilson, I could see Yan Ken Cook, and Julia Child, and then I would watch um, Alexander and Bob Ross, and that was the you know during the winter when you didn't want to be in school, that was the best thing to do. So now if you think of that in context, here we are now in 2020, all these years later, I'm staying at home, and I'm sounding like Bob Ross. So, you know, no surprise. All right, working on that. Got a lot more to do over here. Hmm, I might have to think about that and finish this later and draw something very cool for the over here after a while. So, but that's it. So yeah, I encourage you if you've never tried, um, never tried drawing with a crow quill, I encourage you to do so. Very relaxing, very methodical. So let me take this out of here. So as you can see, you can get a lot of great detail. There's the barn off in the distance. So, um, but you can do a lot of great detail. Now I will say this, because I'm not using the best of paper. As you can see, the ink has kind of come through. So you want to make sure you're using a little bit better paper. But um, So anyway, that's what all I have for you today. I hope you've enjoyed uh, drawing with a quill. Um, if you have any questions, um, uh, please post in the comments, any, um, anybody does, wants to try this, um, I'd love to see your drawings, you can post those in the comments too, um, and also any suggestions for future classes, feel free to post those as well, uh, I hope you guys enjoy this, and, uh, have a great day, um, stay safe, stay home, uh, we'll see you soon, bye-bye.